Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the big advantages we get to do in Rotary is we hear about all of these great programs and projects being done around the world. One of the ones most recently that came up was a project being done in Hawaii. And uh, I figured that with the budget that I had, I would be able to go there and actually film this myself. But uh, unfortunately, we decided to do this remotely, which works out just as well. With me today, I have the man that thought about the whole thing. This is Greg Horn. Greg, welcome. Thanks so much for having me, Wade. And we're here to talk about, first of all, your show, but we want to know a little bit about yourself. So tell me, what, what do you do? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a business owner. I've been a serial entrepreneur for a number of years. I sell real estate here on the North Shore of Kauai, and I also support uh, startup founders that are raising investment capital, help them raise that capital and connect with investors. Great. Great. So how did you get involved with Rotary? Yeah, it was fun. Actually, my, my first company I started on the mainland was a crowdfunding company, and so I have a background in helping nonprofits raise funds. And when I got here, uh, I was going to help with a, a sandcastle competition, actually raise some sponsorship capital. And they said, hey, Rotary helped out last year with sponsorship. Why don't you go and talk to them? And so I showed up, heard about all the amazing projects that my fellow Rotarians were doing around the island. And I've always been one for service all through high school and college. And I said, these guys have it going on. And even though I'm the youngest in my club by probably about 20 years, it was something that really kind of warmed my heart and I jumped in full board. Sounds good. And how long have you been in Rotary? Uh, over four years now, four and a half years. Good for you. Any uh, aspirations of becoming a president? Not right now. I basically have two full-time jobs as it is, so I'm not exactly prepared for another one. Well, it sounds very good. What we'll do now, if you don't mind, um, you've got a great show, so we're going to go ahead and jump into that video and see what this uh, program is all about. So with Great, that, thanks. That's okay with you there, Greg. We are going to jump right in. Mahalo Nui, everyone, and thanks for having me on the district webinar here today. Um, again, my name is Greg Horn and I uh, wanted to share a bit about the Catch a Wave business competition that we put together at the Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay. Um, please feel free guys, as I'm going through this, jump in with any questions. I'm happy to answer them and, and divert a little bit. I, you know, I see this as a talk story session here today, so by all means we can keep it casual. But I uh, wanted to share a bit about what, what went on at this event um, and why it took place, as you can see here, uh, at this year's event. I think Ted actually I see you and Rick in that picture there and Monica Ozust is in the picture there as well and David Dinner in the foregrounds of fellow Rotarian. You know it really became this way for the community to come out and support our fellow entrepreneurs in the community and, and business leaders that are doing so much to employ you know uh, great people in the community and create wonderful jobs. So you know this was at this year's event kind of the the culmination of two years of hard work to get to this point and, and we look forward to seeing it grow even further. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, for me, I believe a, a strong small business community is that rising tide that lifts all boats and really helps to provide better local jobs and, and strengthen a local economy. Unfortunately, as you folks all know, you know, so much of our economy and goods and things are shipped in from the mainland and from elsewhere around the world. And so the more that we can create and produce things and jobs and, and, and products and services here locally, the better for everyone involved. So that was really one of the key pieces behind this. Plus for us, it was fun as I, as I got into it more, it, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not exactly a, a rotary historian, so I didn't pretend to know all the history that well. But as I developed this and we started building the first year's program, a number of Rotarians commented to me about how this really comes back to Rotary's founding values of business owners helping business owners ultimately for community benefit, but really rooted in that, that business networking um, framework because of how uh, strong businesses provide those local jobs. So it was fun to come back to that, that foundational value. And so, you know, there's my fellow Rotarian, Ben Gillikin, who he and John Ozust actually were two of our volunteer cameramen um, at the finale this year. They did a wonderful job. Um, later on, I'll show you uh, a, a quick video that we put together with clips from the finale. So if, there, if there's any footage that doesn't look too great, you got to rib Ben and John about that. Uh, make, sure to, make sure to give them heck about it. So. But yeah, it was really amazing, too, to see the way that 
my fellow Rotarians jumped in with both feet and, and loved this project and continue to. And I was just with Monica about an hour ago and she's all excited asking me when we're getting ready for, uh, for the 2020 catch a wave and when we'll start that whole process. Because it also gave some of my fellow Rotarians this, this, this different purpose. And, and this was something that really came through and I'll, I'll talk more about the story in a bit. Um, but so many Rotarians have an amazing wealth of experience and knowledge and expertise from their various careers across all different industries and sectors and things. And to be able to, to use that knowledge and for it to be appreciated and, and encouraged and asked for, and, and like I said, really uh, folks to have the gratitude for them to share that knowledge was a really big thing and why the mentorship has been arguably even over and above the cash prizes and other things, the mentorship provided by Rotarians and other business leaders in our community has been arguably the biggest thing that we've been able to provide to the winners. So this really began with uh, the Kapa'a High School. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, Kapa'a is a town on the east side here. And the high school a few years ago, uh, one of the teachers, the business class teacher, ran a shark tank competition for her business class. And somehow I was asked to uh, mentor one of the teams. They had heard that of my entrepreneurship background and asked me to jump in and mentor one of the teams and coach one of those teams. And so I did, you know, met with them a couple of times to really hone in their pitch and their business model. Now these were kids coming up with a business idea, right? They weren't actually operating these businesses. Um, although I was encouraging them, like, you've got a really good idea, take this, run with it. Um, but, you know, it was really about, at the end of the the end of the semester, they would be presenting to sharks to a, a Shark Tank like competition venue. Um, and so I had the opportunity to uh, sit in the venue and watch the presentations. And I did this for two years actually, um, and watching these kids present some really great ideas. I mean, one team, the team that won the second year, I believe that was 2017, it had a really viable business model and. I and a number of other folks, um, you know, some of the sharks and other people in the audience were encouraging them, guys, please pursue this. But the challenge was that these kids were splintering off, going to colleges in different parts of the country or the world. And, and so they, you know, it wasn't necessarily on the, on the top of their priority list to also try and start a company. And around the same time, you know, being an entrepreneur myself in the community, I have a number of friends that run businesses both here and elsewhere and I started hearing it over and over like, man, I could really use some help with accounting or I could really use some help with marketing or, you know, what? it'd be awesome if someone had some guidance they can give me like, you know, semi-legal advice. I don't really want to pay a lawyer, but I just need a little kind of guidance on should I be an LLC or a C-Corp, simple stuff like that. Um, and it really got my wheels turning. And this is where you know, I, I was talking with a couple of friends and then went to a Rotary meeting and was talking to some of my fellow Rotarians about their various expertise and, and backgrounds from their business careers. And it really sparked this idea of, okay, this is something that we should really find a way to adapt to this, the model of Shark Tank in the high school class, but actually do it for business owners here in the community. And so as that idea was germinating around in my dome for some months, you know, it was one of those things hanging out up there. Um, Monica Ozust, who was our president elect asked me to be on the board. And I had, I had politely declined a board request the year prior. And um, you know, I, <laughs> I basically have two full-time jobs. I, I wasn't necessarily keen on taking another responsibility on, but I, you know, I love the club. I love my, my fellow Rotarians. And when Monica asked, I said, okay, well, and she coincidentally asked me to be the vocational chair. And I said, okay, well, what if I wanted to do this shark tank competition for actual businesses on the island? She said, great, go for it. Like <laughs> kind of good luck kid, uh, have at it. And so, <laughs> um, so that really sparked the journey. So from there, I, you know, I started kind of quickly thinking about, okay, how can I, how can I do this in the most straightforward way possible? And uh, my training in starting businesses in the past, uh, one of the keys is the lean startup model, which t focuses on how do you build something? So when you are thinking about a business, 
you have all of these assumptions that you make in your head about the viability. Okay, people will buy it, they'll do X, they'll respond this way, we'll make this much money, et cetera, et cetera. The lean startup model says, okay, take one of those hypotheses and build a minimum viable product. What can you build with the minimum amount of time, energy, and money to test that hypothesis? So even if that's a survey of some kind, some way to test that and say, okay, yes or no, what did we learn? All right, where do we go next? So I decided to kind of use that model. And so we put together a really simple application to say, all right, we're putting together this catch a wave business competition. I don't even know. We might not have even settled on the name of the competition by this point. It was so early on. But anyway, we said we have this business competition where you'll be presenting to a panel of judges for, and as I put here, competing for monetary and in-kind prizes because we had no idea what we were going to be offering to the finalists, but we knew we wanted to first see if we got interest. And so we did that and, you know, did our best to promote it, but it was really coconut wireless style, just reaching out to folks that we knew that were plugged into different groups of business owners here and there. And over maybe a month or two of pushing it out a few times, we got 33 applicants. So that's 33 small business owners on our tiny little island of Kauai here that applied for this competition that no one had ever heard of. They didn't know what they'd be competing for, but it showed this real need in our community for support for these small business owners. So we knew we were onto something. But again, you know, I didn't really know how to go from there. But now having these 33 applicants, we went running around trying to obtain sponsorship and we did. We got a number of sponsors, including our Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay, uh, to sponsor the competition and provide various levels of uh, monetary and in-kind prizes that we'd be able to offer to the winners. And that was wonderful. But one of the, one of the challenges was, okay, we have these 33 companies. We know we want to narrow this down to six or eight at the finals, excuse me. Um, but how do we do that? So we decided in the first year um, to interview all 33. And we figured we'd pair off and, okay, me and one fellow Rotarian will interview this one and you two will interview that one and you two will interview that one. And it just became a bit of a nightmare because I was trying, my goal in these interviews was even if the business owner doesn't make it to the finals, I want to make sure that they get some value from the conversation. So based on their applications, if we knew they were looking for help with marketing and sales, for example, that was one I was likely to go on because that's my background and expertise. Um, you know, if it was something related to, uh, you know, they need help with hiring and recruiting, we'd make sure that one of my fellow Rotarians that has a bit more expertise in that area was going to be involved in the interview. But all that created a bit of a, a scheduling nightmare as we had, okay, you know, it's me and David Dinner running over here, and then it's me and Monica running over here on a different day at a different time. And it was just a, a bit of a headache that way, <laughs> let alone when some of the folks needed to reschedule. So that was something, again, in the model, in the mode of learning as we went, we definitely learned, and I heard loud and clear from my fellow Rotarians that we needed to shore up how we did that uh, for this coming year, this past year, uh, the next time around. And going into the finale, the, the final event that first year, someone asked me, uh, John Ozus actually, I believe, asked me, hey, Greg, what's your goal? Like, how many, how many folks are you looking to have? And I said, you know, honestly, I don't care if nobody shows up. For this first event, my goal is making sure that we have all eight finalists get to present to a panel of five judges, and the judges are able to determine who those three winners are for second and third place, and we're able to give them the prizes, right? If we've done nothing else, but that, we've succeeded, right? We've been able to then give give out the prizes and support the small business community in that way. And sure enough, we had about 60 attendees. We were in a small, uh, a small cathedral, a small church here uh, in Lihui on the east side. But we had about 60 attendees show up. And uh, because of our wonderful sponsors, we awarded $5,000 in cash prizes amongst other prizes to our winners. And it was really a successful event. We were really stoked. But we knew that it could get bigger and better the second year. This was the video we put together uh, going into this, this year's event to explain to folks what the event was and why they should apply and why they should attend. Are you ready to catch a wave for your business on Kauai? 
the Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay is excited to once again host the Catch a Wave Business Competition, a Kauai-style shark tank. Local businesses will get a chance to win, capital for their company, mentorship by veteran successful entrepreneurs, a free membership to Kauai's leading business network, the Kauai Chamber of Commerce, plus more. Businesses apply online, the contest committee picks the top companies to interview, and then the finalists are selected for the competition's finale. The finale is a free public event where each finalist will pitch to the judges and the audience. The Sharks ask questions, provide insight and feedback, and then pick the winners. Being in the competition has definitely given me a lot of local exposure. I've had people come up to me on the streets and seen me in the Garden Island or heard me on the radio or just even had a friend that was in the audience that evening. So I think the growth in the community has been excellent. As a business owner, I had my doubts about what I was doing in my business and just being in front of five judges and being able to answer all of their questions really validated what I was doing and that I was on the right path. It's simple to apply. Go to catchawavekauai.com and fill out the application online. All finalists get to exhibit their product and service and network with our local sharks, local business owners and the community. We believe that a strong small business community is the rising tide that lifts all boats, providing better jobs and a more stable community for our Ohana and Keiki. Tell your Ohana to attend the free finale and cheer on their favorite entrepreneur. Go to catchawavekauai.com to fill out your application and we'll see you at the finale. Mahalo to our wonderful sponsors and all those that support entrepreneurship on Kauai. As you can see, that's what we did. Really, it was a big deal for Kelly. So you saw Kelly in the video there uh, who won that first year's event. She won the 2018 event. Um, she's a mother of two th running a thriving business. And yet, literally, as soon as we had awarded her the prize in that first year's event, she came running up to me after, gave me a big hug, tears in her eyes, was so excited to be recognized in this way by the community and said, let me know what I can do to be involved. I love this. I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to apply and do it and be involved in next year's competition. And sure enough, she was. You know, she, this was something a couple folks have asked me about this and how many Rotarians we recruited as part of this effort. And, you know, I, I like to remind folks, it's not always about are we recruiting members, though that's important. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, but in this case, Kelly doesn't necessarily have the time to be a Rotarian herself, but she was involved in a, in a very strong way. She not only sat for uh, a couple hours while we shot that, you know, the video footage we needed for that video, but she also came onto two different uh, radio interviews with me promoting the competition, um, did, a, did another Garden Island, our local newspaper interview to promote the competition. So she really jumped in. She even, you know, was going to be heavily involved in, in making sure that her social media was going to be, uh, you know, she was going to put it out on her social media to make sure folks got involved. And then she even, Ron Margolis talked her somehow into coming and selling uh, tickets at one of our events, a totally separate event, a, a St. Patrick's Day event. And she jumped in and jumped in like a fellow Rotarian would. And so, you know, in, in my mind, she's a Rotarian in spirit, right? And even if she's not a member per se, um, the fact that she's serving her community in these different ways shows that we're doing the right thing. And she said to me multiple times that she frankly had no idea what Rotary does. She's maybe in her late twenties, maybe early thirties. You know, she had no, no idea what Rotary is or does. And, and this really gave her a totally different perspective on what Rotary does in the community. So that was huge, right? Reaching a totally different demographic. And like I said, this year, uh, you know, I gave examples of how Kelly and I were out in the community promoting the event on radio, you know, radio interviews, newspaper interviews, putting things like that video out on social media and promoting it in different ways. It was a bit easier because we had the momentum through the Coconut Wireless of the event last year. I had a number of folks come up after the first year's event and say, oh my God, I can't believe, I just heard about that. I can't believe I didn't hear about it beforehand. Like, why didn't you tell me? And I said, well, I sent you an email. But, you know, they, they were so excited to then come to this year's event. So this year we got 44 applicants, which was huge. I mean, just any, 
any increase over what happened that first year was going to be tremendous for us. And, and clearly it worked. It was a, a tremendous, tremendous increase for us. And we were so excited and the caliber of businesses that were applying really stepped up a notch. I mean, it was, it was quite impressive. Um, this year we decided, we, we decided to only interview 18 of those 44, not all 44. And we made them come to us. We basically, you know, we learned from the first year, right. And that's what the, the lean startup model is. It's all about learning and iterating, learning and iterating. And so we uh, just set it up really succinctly. We said, okay, interviews are happening on this one day in these time slots, pick a time slot. And we went through, it was like a speed dating session for all of our interviews. We had them going back to back to back to back to back uh, and got all the interviews done in, in one afternoon. So as I said, we streamlined the processes, you know, right after that same day, after we interviewed those 18 that we had chosen as the semi-finalists, we chose our eight finalists that day. So now I want to show you briefly the video we put together for the, from the event. So this is the wrap up video. Aloha. Welcome to the second annual Catch a Wave business competition. Putting this competition together last year was a dream inspired by many wonderful people in this community and many of my heroes around the world. This event was created by the Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay. Rotary is an international service organization that was founded over 100 years ago by business leaders coming together to help each other and ultimately help the community benefit. This year, we had 44 companies apply for the Catch a Wave business competition. That's 44 local companies on our tiny little island, 44 brave leaders. And I'm proud to say that each and every one of them is looking to make our community and ultimately our planet better in some way. My intention is to revolutionize the way our community approaches their wellness by making sustainable and effective products accessible. Everything we offer is healthy for our bodies, but we also choose to look at things from an innovative angle Bee Team as an official nonprofit dedicated to preserving feral honeybee species. <laughs> cool moment, cool moment. And Kelly was the CEO of my company. Now I taste the chocolate. She actually is a certified chocolate taster. It's a real thing, you can look it up. <laughs> more stuff, more staff, more staff, even a bigger space. More space. That's what so that people can bring me donations. They go to the thrift shop. I source from the thrift store. Thrift store also helps the community um, find affordable things. The South Side has no thrift store, and it's difficult. I wanted to provide healthy, fresh, and fast food to our working community. There is enough, there is enough business on the island for everybody to grow and get along, I think. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much competition, it doesn't matter how much competition you ever have. There's always room for somebody that does something well. Yeah, the competition always makes us better. Okay, that's our... I've loved sewing and design. I got my first machine when I was seven and sold my first Aloha shirt at the age of 10. I went on to do custom work and costuming for local productions. I knew that there had to be a different way to educate, so I decided to start my own. I knew I wouldn't be able to change the system from within, and so I decided to create my own. I knew our students in Hawaii deserved more, and I knew that we had the talent here to be able to express that. What this robot, robotic mower from Husker Bonner will do, um, it'll allow you not to have to mow in your yard anymore. And then I'm gonna go into a little bit about how I came up with the idea, and then how I was able to convince Husker Bonner to give me a dealership on the island. Eight great companies have competed and the judges have somehow come to a decision. I give them a lot of credit. Third place goes to Shat Hiramoto of Machine Machine. Second place goes to Christina Zimmerman of Homeschool Now. Catch a Wave Business Competition winner for 2019 is Aloha Aina Juice Cafe.
So as you can see, it was a whole lot of fun. I, I had a blast. Um, and we had over 200 folks attended. Uh, Ted was there in the room, many of my fellow Rotarians from the Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay, and, and the community was a buzz about it for, you know, like a week or so leading up to it for sure. And then for, for weeks afterward, everyone was so excited about how the event went off and, and how, how much they were excited to learn about these businesses that they had never heard of right here in our tiny little community. You know, it was amazing how many folks had never heard of so many of these businesses. As the, the winner, Michelini of Aloha Aina Juice Cafe, was awarded $7,500 cash for her business, um, which, by the way, we do via reimbursements. So it's not that we just give her a check. Uh, the big check was for show. Uh, we say, okay, you have this kitty in our Rotary Club Foundation of $7,500. Make a business purchase and then send us the receipts and we'll reimburse you. Uh, which actually just recently Misha used the whole of her 7,500. She was so excited. They got a, a brand new cooler in her juice cafe that she was able to put like grab and go sandwiches, which is what she had been hoping for. And she also got a free first year lease in a new shopping center that's coming here in Kilauea, um, which she was over the moon about. It was amazing. We also, to the top three this year, we didn't do this the first year, frankly, because we didn't think of it. Um, but this year we were excited and, and really stoked to give honorary first year Rotary membership to our top three winners. Um, I know, and, and Ted, I'd love for you to chime in what it's been like uh, with Shannon, but it, you, you folks may have seen Shannon Hiramoto of Machine Machine. She is an amazing business model, by the way, where basically she brings, she sources materials from thrift shops and ultimately wants to have her own thrift shop and garage sales and other secondhand means. And then her and her team of seamstresses will recreate those garments into either new garments, bags, other different ways to kind of upcycle those, those things that would have maybe gone to a landfill otherwise. And so her, her business model is amazing. And she's been so excited. She just sent me an email recently how excited she's been to connect with Ted. She's on the South Shore, so she's with the Poipu Rotary. Well, that was a great segment to that one. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see all of it. It looks like there's a lot more left to that one. So I hope you don't mind, Greg, if uh, we invite you back, have you come back and look at the rest of this program and see what the show is actually all about. I'd love to, thank you. Sounds good. Okay, with that, we will put you on the calendar um, and we will then get back and get to see the rest of that. And with you, uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Stick around. We are going to be around for that show, too, coming up soon. With that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.